Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio on this Workbench Wednesday. I hope you are having a great day wherever you are and whenever you happen to be watching this. This week I want to delve into a topic that is very, very important if you want to keep your trains running well. It's not a real sexy topic, and so this video probably won't get a ton of views as a result of that, but it is something that needs to be talked about, and uh, that is keeping the track clean. If your trains get their power from the rails, like they do here on the Thunder Mesa layout, obviously it's very important to keep those rails clean so that they will continue to conduct electricity well. Now if you're one of those people that uses uh, dead rail and battery power, obviously none of this is going to apply to you. But if you're using good old uh, DC analog power or DCC digital power to operate your trains, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how I keep the rails clean and the trains running smoothly here on the Thunder Mesa layout. Of course, there are a lot of different opinions out there about the best ways to clean your track and keep it clean. In fact, if you were to ask 10 different model railroaders, you might get 10 totally different answers. Uh, but all I can really show you today is what works for me. What I have found through trial and error is the most effective method for cleaning the track and, and keeping it uh, relatively clean. And I will let you all in on a little secret. For years, I was actually cleaning my track wrong. I was uh, following the advice that I read in a magazine or found somewhere online and uh, using isopropyl alcohol to clean my track. And I know there are probably a lot of you out there that are still using this to clean your track. You know, you put it on a soft cotton cloth and you, you wipe the railhead with it and, you know, black gunk will come off. That's all true. It will take those deposits off. So in the short term, it will clean your track. Your track will be clean for a day. But the problem with it is um, this is what's known as polar. It uh, conducts electricity. Your track, if you were to look at it under a powerful microscope, even when it's brand new, has uh, lots of little uh, scratches and micro pits and stuff like that in it. And so if you use a, a, a polar liquid, a conductive liquid, like say 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean your track, or even 90%, um, when the train wheels pass over that, you're going to get micro arcing, you know, little, tiny little sparks. You might not, might not even be able to see them with the human eye, but what those do is that's what creates that black gunk that black buildup, that carbon deposit on the rail that reduces uh, the conductivity and over time will make your trains run poorly. I would also caution you to be wary of any sort of abrasive track cleaners uh, like these Bright Boy track erasers, which have been around for years. In fact, I've been using them for years. Uh, this is my track cleaner of last resort. And that's because those little scratches, those little micro abrasions in the rail that I was just talking about, these actually make those worse. <laughs> they cause more of those. And of course, more of those micro scratches, micro abrasions, it's got to ca cause more arcing, more buildup, more gunk, and worse conductivity in the long run. Well, now with what not to do out of the way, what should you use? Uh, well, I use this stuff. Odorless mineral spirits. Uh, this is non-conductive, non-polar, so it won't cause that micro arcing and does a great job of taking just about any kind of gunk and grime and dust and buildup off the track in one or two passes. And so here are my favorite track cleaning tools. And, you know, it's all just homemade stuff. Uh, I, this is a wine cork, and I wrap a piece of t-shirt material, cut from an old shirt, just an old piece of cotton cloth, you know. Polyester would probably work well, too. Cotton's just a little bit more absorbent. And then I hold it in place on the cork with a couple of push pins. 
And this is my number one go-to track cleaner. Take a little bit of the mineral spirits, pour it into a glass or metal dish. Don't use plastic because the mineral spirits will dissolve the plastic over time. Then you just simply dip it down in there. It soaks right into your t-shirt material, your cotton, and you're ready to go clean track. By the way, when the cloth starts to look like this, <laughs> that's when it's time to change it and throw it away. Now this is exactly the same thing, a cork with some old t-shirt wrapped around it, but I've epoxied it to a length of aluminum rod, and this is actually threaded rod, so I can take it apart, make it different lengths. And this is incredibly handy for cleaning inside tunnels, uh, bridge on, through bridges, uh, any kind of hard to reach areas. Uh, that's what I made this for. And this is one of my favorite things. <laughs> it does a great job of reaching uh, those hard to reach places on the layout. And the same thing, you just put it right in there. And it soaks up those mineral spirits and you're ready to go clean track. Now, even though the mineral spirits are non-conductive, I still always like to make sure that the power to the track is turned off before I start doing this. See, I'm just going back and forth over the rail heads. Now, if your rail is painted like mine is, uh, mineral spirits will, you know, if you pour it on there or soak it, will uh, dissolve that paint. But the idea is here is you're just doing this very lightly and uh, <laughs> you're not you're not going to be putting enough on there to, uh, to dissolve that paint. Let me put it that way. It should be evaporating you know almost the moment you put it on. Especially I like to get around uh, the frogs and points of turnouts. In fact, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll just do a, what I call a quick clean, <laughs> where I'll go around and I'll just hit the turnouts. And that seems to be enough. And the goal here is to return the track to its uh, as-new state as much as possible. Just as it was when you got it out of the box. Because that's when it was the most conductive. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, running it over time with a lot of trains is, is going to uh, reduce the conductivity uh, because of that buildup. So your goal is to try and return it to as close to new as you can get it. You don't really need to do much else. Look at that. Now this thing is um, super handy for getting back into tunnels, as I mentioned. I call this the magic wand. I get about uh, two thirds of the way through this tunnel, and I get the other, the rest of it from the other side. Also handy where there's uh, uh, scenery close by the track that I don't want to, you know, get my big clumsy hands in there. Yeah, now that I have this thing, I, I'm not sure how I got along without it for so long. There are commercial products out there that are similar. Basically, a, a track cleaning pad on the end of a rod like this. I like the cork because it's round and uh, means you can get the track from high angles, low angles, turn it over, use the other side when, when one side gets dirty. The adjustable handle means I can get into even harder to reach places sometimes where there might, might not be room for that whole long handle, like on a curve like this. So I will just continue to go around hitting the rail heads everywhere, following the track all the way around the layout. Usually go around uh, two, three times. And I'll do a thorough cleaning like this probably once a month. And that's enough. And my goal here is to, you know, keep scrubbing until it's uh, not that black anymore. Looks like I still have a ways to go. And that's really it to cleaning the track, uh, but that's really only half of the equation. The other side of the coin 
are the wheels on your locomotives and your cars, things that are running over that track all the time. That's the other side, which also needs to be conductive. And I think I clean those wheels about once every three to six months, uh, depending on how often uh, that particular piece of equipment is used. And for those using the same mineral spirits, I'll take a Q-tip, dip it in there, and clean the treads of the wheels, just like that. See that? You also want to get on a locomotive like this, where the uh, where the wipers are hitting the insides of the wheels here. You want to make sure the insides of the wheels are clean, also. This one actually looks pretty good. I've seen much, much worse. <laughs> And you want to get those non-pickup wheels, too, because they're going to be picking up gunk, like this trailing truck here. It doesn't have pickups that go to the decoder or the motor or anything, but uh, as they turn on the rails, they're going to be picking up whatever kind of gunk is on there, so you got to clean it off. Now this stuff right here is called Noox IDA Special, and it's a, a, it is a special uh, conductive wax basically that's what it looks like it looks like earwax for lack of a better description and you'll hear a lot of uh, people talk about this stuff uh, and applying it to the rails after you clean it you clean uh, all of your rails and all of your wheels on every single piece of equipment then take a tiny little dab on the end of your finger like I'm doing here and then you go over all of the rails all of the track that you have and you let the trains run over it you run all of your locomotives over it and then the next day you come back and you wipe off any residue that there might be and it does work really well uh, for keeping your track clean for keeping that build up from happening what it does as i understand it it goes in and it fills those little micro pits and scratches that i was talking about and rather than causing micro arcing, it's a, it's a conductive wax that fills those that prevents that. So uh, it seems to work really, really well. At one time, I had the entire layout coated with this stuff. But here's my honest uh, appraisal um, <laughs> for, from someone who runs the layout in kind of display mode uh, at least once a month. All of that cleaning and all of that running of the trains and the, all of the steps that you have to go through with this um, make it, in my opinion, a little bit more trouble than it's worth. And if you go back and clean a section of track again, say you have a trouble spot, you, do, you have to go through the whole thing again. You have to reapply it. I, uh, it's just easier for me to clean the track and the wheels, uh, or clean the track once a month, clean the wheels every three to six months. But... You know, if you uh, if you want to give this stuff a try, uh, if I can find it, uh, I'll put a link in the description down below, and you can check it out. A lot of people swear by it, and it does work. It's just um, kind of a hassle, frankly. I, I I just don't find cleaning to be that that onerous, so I don't I don't mind doing it once a month or so. But with this stuff, they say you almost never have to clean your track. All you have to do is vacuum. I didn't find that to be a hundred percent true, but it certainly does help. One thing I do find very handy and use all the time are these artists' graphite sticks. And I just get them from the art supply store, get them online. And I consider this kind of emergency first aid <laughs> for the rails. Uh, if there's a trouble spot, say in a turnout, uh, you know, points aren't conducting, or, you know, for whatever reason, you just take it just lightly, do that. That's all you got to do. See how there's a little groove worn in there from going over the rails? Yeah, that's just from doing this. And then when the trains pass over, they pick up that graphite, and they're kind of like the uh, the no ox stuff. They're going to distribute it to the to the uh, rails all around the track. Now, occasionally, I will find a spot on the rails where there's some gunk that just will not come off, not even with mineral spirits, and that's when I bring out the heavy artillery which is a bright boy like this, and scrape that booger right off of there. As I mentioned earlier, I only use these very sparingly because they do put 
micro pits and scratches in the rail and that can lead to more gunk buildup and you know gunk is the enemy so you know these are handy tools to have but use them sparingly don't go over all of your track all the time with these so to sum up uh stay away from polar things things that conduct electricity any kind of fluid uh to clean your track like 70 percent isopropyl alcohol a lot of people use this stuff not great uh stay away from abrasive things as much as possible uh if you need to use them if you have to use them you know okay but you know that's the reason i don't use a track cleaning car because uh you know there's there's two kinds there's the kind with the roller which has uh which you put maybe say mineral spirits on and there's the kind with an abrasive pad in my experience I, I i'm not a big fan of either one of those but your mileage may vary you know if i left anybody's favorite track cleaning technique out please put it down in the comments below and we can talk about it there but that is my track cleaning and maintenance 101. thank you all so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed the video and got something good out of it if you did like subscribe share hit that notification bell to see more from thunder mesa studio and you can also follow us over on instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the thunder mesa studio website at thunder mesa dot studio and if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel and wish to show your support you can do what these nice folks did and go over to patreon.com slash thunder mesa and show your support there until next time keep your wheels clean keep your track clean keep moving forward adios for now